In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a simple building using procedural nodes in Houdini. To start, we're going to create a new project. I call it hengine underscore lesson. This will have all the directories we need to organize our work. Press accept. Next, we're going to go uh, save as, and we're going to save a file named hengine underscore 01. Now, once I have that, we press C, and we're going to go down to geometry, and we're going to select a grid. Press Enter to place that at the origin. We're going to create a size. Up in the operation controls, we're going to go 5 and 3, and rows will be 4 and 6. Now we can't see those right away. If we press uh, V, we can get the display and go to smooth wired shaded. Now we can see the topology on that grid. And once we have that, we want to create a second um, piece of geometry. We're going to go C, Geometry Box, and we're going to press Enter to place that at the origin. This will be our column. And we're going to double click into there to find the geometry object for that. And we're going to set the size to 0.1, 1, and 0.1. And there we go, that's the column that we want. Now what we also want to do in here is we'll call that column, we'll rename it because we're going to probably refer to it as we as we build our network. We're going to go tab match size, we're going to press N to select everything and enter, and then we're going to do a justify Y of uh, min. Place that there. Now once we have um, these two elements, so they're currently two objects, two separate objects, uh, so we want to connect them so one way we can do this is let's have the box object selected and then we're going to go up to modify and copy to points and we're going to select the grid and enter to build a sort of a connected network of those two. Turn off the transform using implicit target to let the columns go back up and we'll press 4 to go to grid's uh, primitive selection. So this is giving us um, a column of grids and that's perfect. What we're going to do now is we're going to go tab poly extrude and we're going to branch off from the grid to create an extruded version of that original grid as a slab. So we're going to go 0 0.1. Now if we look, if we tumble around you're going to see that it extruded it but got rid of the bottom so we need to output the back if we want to see geometry on both sides. So we do need geometry on both sides. Once we have that we can, um, well, we're going to template the um, the columns just so that we can see them while we do the next step. We're going to put another tab match size, and this will allow us to use the extrude and push it to the top of the columns. So we get that. Now, right now, it's going to the middle, so we want to go to the max, to the top, and we're going to add a 0 0.1 to compensate for the thickness of the slab. And there we go, we've now got the slab sitting on top of the columns. Uh, and if we want to see those two together, um, it's just a matter of tab merge and then wire those things like this. Now, once we have that, uh, we can, we, what we want to do now is we want to sort of extrude out the ends of the slab just to overhang a little bit. So we're going to do something here where we're going to create a group called Edges. And right now Edges is finding all the geometry on the slab. And that's fine. What we then want to do is Alt-Drag that to create a second version. And this time we're not going to pick everything. And we're going to change it to Subtract from Existing. Then we're going to go Keep by Normals. We're going to go 0, 1, 0 and a spread of 0. And what you'll see is we've subtracted the top faces from the group. That's good. It's part of what we want to do. Alt-Drag again to create a second version of that subtract group. And this second one, we're just going to go negative 1 instead of 1. So now we've taken an original group, subtracted the top and the bottom, and now we've got the sides. So we've managed to select the edges. Now we can go into that and pol tab poly extrude put that node in there and it's just a matter of using the edges group and going 0 0.15 and there we go we've extended that out now currently we're 
displaying the group, not the polyhedral. Let's go down to the bottom and display the merge, and we can see the final result. Um, and we can still see the selected node is showing us the slab, and we've still got the templates. So we just click, click away. We'll get everything we need. Now, once we have uh, all of this, what we want to go is tab, copy and transform, press N to select everything, enter, and then we're going to drag that up so we can make more than one copy using this. But we want it to go up the right amount. So what we're going to do is go way back to the column here, and we're going to right click in here and go copy parameter. And then we're going to go onto the copy node and double click on there and go paste relative references and plus 0.1. And that puts it exactly where we need it. And then because of the way this node works is we've got a parameter for how many of these copies we want and we can just add floors to the building using that. So there you go. We've created a, a nice simple building fairly quickly using these various tools uh, within Houdini. You've got a nice flow of the network there. And what we'd like to do now is take that and make turn that into a digital asset. So we're going to make a new digital asset out of that. We're going to call it building. And click here, go to dollar hip, HDA, uh, and keep the building, and there we go. And press accept. So what this is doing is, is wrapping up all those nodes into a what's called a digital asset and allowing us to store that on disk. And we'll be able to use that uh, as a procedural asset in Unreal uh, in a second.